Okay, uh, this is going to be a little review of some Thermo 1. Uh, this is going to be a Thermo 2 class, and so the Thermo 1, hopefully you're all familiar with it, but we'll review a few topics. So here we go. Okay, well, this is a turbine. This is a schematic of a turbine. And it's shown as this trapezoidal object. The idea is that high pressure steam enters this smaller end of the turbine and it expands through this device, uh, the turbine, and then it exits at a lower pressure here at two. So here's a simple turbine. And uh, let's say that steam enters the turbine at six megapascals. So six megapascals is 6,000 kilopascals. And maybe the temperature is uh, 500 degrees C. And that it exits at O can be uh, 10 kPa. So the question is, if the process is isentropic, then what is the exit state and the work done? So when we say find the exit state, if it's a superheated condition, we want to know the temperature. And if it is in the two-phase region, that is a saturated mixture, then we want to know the quality. OK, so how do we proceed? Well, the Isentropic process is used to find that final state. So uh, let's first find the initial entropy. How do we find that initial entropy? Well, we know two properties. We know the pressure and the temperature, and that is a superheated mixture. We can look this up in our steam tables. We also have uh, some functions that can be used if you have these Excel add-ins uh, under X Steam, and uh, you can use those. I think that's where we want to look. So let's look at X Steam. Yes, this is what we look up. Uh, this is a catalog of functions that can return the properties of steam. And it's the same as looking this up in the steam tables, that we need to know two properties, in this case, pressure and temperature. So if we want to know the entropy, these are enthalpy values. Let's scroll down this list. There's entropy S as a function of pressure and temperature. That looks like the function that we want since we know the pressure and the temperature. So it says here that we need to give the pressure in kilopascals and the temperature in degrees C. So the pressure is, well, uh, pressure is P1 and the temperature is T1. I'd like to use those little names P1 and T1. And I haven't defined those as yet. So let me let me back off this for a minute. 
and just say uh, cancel. And I want to use some names or symbols to represent P1, T1, and P2. And I can do that by defining some labels here in the name manager. So by highlighting this box, it contains the labels and the values. And then um, going to the name manager, I say create from selection. And then I, I confirm that, yes, the names are in the left column. The names are here in the left column. So, uh, so now I've got those names. Likewise, I'm going to create a name for S1 here in exactly the same way. Okay, so now we'll go back to this. What I was looking to do is find uh, S as a function of P and T for water vapor. And the pressure is P1 and the temperature is T1. And he tells me that that is 6.882 kilojoules per kilogram per degree K. Okay, great. Now, I want to find this exit state. So what two properties define this exit state? Well, yes, since it's isentropic, I know that S2 is equal to S1. And so I'm going to show that over here as a formula so you'll know how I calculated that. So S2 is equal to S1 and the units are the same and I need to have this as a name. And so now what do I need to be able to find the work done for this process? Well, if it's an isentropic process, it's reversible, but it's also adiabatic. So there's no heat transfer. I guess I could remind us maybe of the, let's see if we can uh, show an equation. I guess not. 